I, I, I just, I'm, my heart is heavy this morning. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just so taken by all of this madness that is taking place whew, in our country, in our nation, impacting our lives in ways that really doesn't make sense. And the real deal is the enemy wants us to get used to this. The devil wants you to get used to this, the senseless killings, to think it's okay, to think that nothing is wrong with this. Something is wrong with this. Something is wrong with those that would purchase these guns and assault weapons and go into a school and go into a church, go into a grocery store, supermarket, and do something like this. Saints, if we ever needed to pray, we need to pray now. We need to pray now. We definitely need to pray for this nation. We definitely need to pray for our children. You know, we might be going through a lot of stuff, especially you parents. I can't even get into my message because this has just impacted me. Woo. We going through stuff as adults. We're going through stuff. And the stuff that we're going through, I'm not here to tell you that it doesn't hurt and that is not real. But we can overlook what our children. And now to see what happened yesterday with the 18 children in the elementary school. Not talking about the college. Not talking about high school. Elementary school. Just now learn how to ride a tricycle. Two-wheeler, three-wheeler, whatever haven't even got their footing yet. And already, oh God, where is the heart of our government? Where is the heart of our government when it comes to doing something more than what they're doing? I can't help myself this morning, I'm sorry. And I have a word for you, but I just can't get this out of me. Whew. because this is real and I don't know what it's going to take mm, for us to turn this around Whew. but it's going to take you it's going to take me it's going to take the people of God to rise up when good people don't do something to change what is going on we will continue to stay in the dark. Oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You were not just saved to serve God. I'm, I want to say this again. You were not just saved to serve God. You were also saved to be a blessing to others. To be a blessing to others. Whew. Whether it's the school, whether it's to sing a song, preach a message, uh, put an arm around the shoulder to pray for some, you were also saved to be a blessing to others. Mm, mm, mm. And it's just hard to wrap my head around what's been going on these past few weeks. Seeing that uh, event that Sister Jennifer went to in Buffalo and she shared much of what she experienced there and, and that impacted, it should have impacted the lives of those of us who, or those who were there and, and I'm sure the, the family members of those who lost loved ones and now to see this, to witness this. But look at what second, look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. I'm going to give you my theme in a minute, but hold on, catch this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. I'm reading this from the New American Standard Bible. New American Standard Bible. 
but we have this treasure mm, mm, mm. in earthen vessels, in earthen vessels, so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way. I mean, God gave me this even prior to hearing about all of this, and I'm saying, wow. I didn't understand it because this wasn't part of my message. This wasn't part of my message, but God gave me this as a reminder. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, ooh, Jesus, but not forsaken, struck down, struck down senselessly, but not destroyed. I mean, that devil coming up against mm, the people of God, coming up against our children, coming up against families, coming up against ministries and churches, coming up mm, against the good that you want to do. And look what he says in the 10th verse. Paul says in the 10th verse, always carrying about in the body the dying of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body, in your body. The life of Jesus may be manifested. You need him on the inside. And where there's an absence of Christ, you're going to have carnage. Where there's an absence of this word and the love of God, you're going to have all of the events, all this stuff that we're seeing taking place today. You know, I was blessed to speak with Yolanda on yesterday and she was so excited about, you know, where she's at today in school and so on and so forth, not hearing about what took place in school in Texas there with the shooting of the, of the kids and so on and so forth. You talk about the devil come to steal, kill and destroy and how the enemy will do what he can do to steal to, 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 to just to say, to, to block, to hinder, to distort, to just mess up the good that we can feel and want to experience in our lives. But know that in spite of that, mm, what he says, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, struck down, but not destroyed, afflicted in every way. I mean, that devil, he don't run out of tricks. You know, he hasn't run out of tricks. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Because there's a great God on the inside. There's a great God in you, keeping you, blessing you, helping you through. Ooh, troubled times like this. Troubled times like this. My, 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 my message for today is this. God has blessed you to be a blessing. God has blessed you to be a blessing. He sent you here to be a blessing. But we look at what the enemy can do if we don't, if we give, don't, the Bible says, give no place to the devil. When you give place to the devil, the blessing that you were meant to share, to give into experience is going to be distorted, taken away, whatever. And you're not going to become that instrument or tool of God's righteousness. Instrument of unrighteousness. And that's not what this is about. You were not sent here to be an instrument of unrighteousness. You're carrying the seed of promise. You are carrying the seed of promise. God promised. Mm. He's made promises to each and every one of us. It might not appear. You might not see it. You, you might be waiting a long time. He promised a healing. He's promised a reuniting you with family and loved ones, whatever. There's promises that God has made. Delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. God put something in you that he wants to bring out. See, but the, that's something that God put in you. The devil wants to distort. See, see, understand, God wants you to be a blessing to other, to other people. 
to those in your family, those in your church, those who are part of your ministry, those that are on your job, those who are the next door neighbor, that that that, that elderly person that can't do, you know, need a helping hand or whatever the case may be. Thank God for those of you who are visiting our hospitals and in, 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 in nursing homes and going into our prison systems and doing those things that can just support and to help those who are, let's just say, handicapped and not able to help themselves. How can we find the time to, to sit in front of the television for hours and hours and hours? How can we find the time to do foolish things when there's such a need in the world in which we live in? See, we have to, God wants you to use your gift to bless and serve others. You are here to use your gift. And if you don't know what your gift is, you need to go to the one who created you, the, the manufacturer. You need to have a little talk with Jesus. You need to really introduce yourself to the Holy Spirit. Get to know him. See, because understand the gifts, you have a gift in you. Man. And most likely more than one. But that devil, he wants to distort the good that is in you. He don't want you to see yourself as that someone that can make a difference. A positive difference. We don't have time to go around doing what we see done, being done in the world today. I just can't talk about the United States. This stuff is happening all over, all over this planet. Something is wrong with that. But God God is waiting whew, for us to, to, to rise up. And, 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 and as you use your gift to bless others, not just to bless others, but to serve others. We're here to serve others. One of the best things you can do when you're waiting on the Lord to help you in your situation or to get through your situation or maybe to fight for you is for you to do what? To step up and to step in and help somebody else. I'm not naming no names, but several people on the line is doing that today. Doing that today. Going beyond the call of duty. Might have their own issues, but looking beyond self and seeing the needs of others and in a, in a, in a doing what they can do to be a help and a support and an encouragement to other people. And that's what this is about. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. What God has given to you, he wants you to, to share. He wants you to give it to someone else. See, if you can't help, don't hurt. If you can't help somebody, please don't hurt them. There's enough hurt going around. There's enough hurt in our families. There's enough hurt in our schools. There's enough hurt in our churches, in our in our, on our, there's enough hurt in our cities. There's enough hurt in our government. There's enough hurt going around. So if you can help, please don't hurt. Time mm, to do that something that can make life just a little bit better. I'm touched by all of the events of what is going on today. But don't make the mistake of falling into the trap. Or make the mistake of passing your hurt, your pain, and your shame onto other people. Because you can't or don't know how to deal with it. And sometimes hurting people hurt people. And usually they're hurting the people, the very people that they should be loving. The very people that are there to support, to encourage them. Those very people that are there to... To, 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 to give them an arm up, a hand up. The very people that are there to let them know. Please give me some napkin, some tissue, baby. Thank you. This is real. This is real. And it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better. Praise God. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't plan to do it this way. But. You know, and, and, and see, we need to ask God to help us make come up with a plan. To come up with a plan, an idea, 
something that we can do, something that you can do to help and support somebody else. You need to come up with a plan, an idea. But you're wasting time sitting in front of the television. You're wasting time in the rocking chair. And there's some folk out there who have fallen on hard times. I mean, fallen on hard times. And if they don't need anything else, they can, they can use a comforting word. If nothing else, a comforting word. But any way that you can help, that's why I say you need to get a game plan. God will bless you in return. That's the beautiful thing about God. Ooh, I'm talking about the press down, shaking together, overflowing blessing. He will, he will drop, he will, he will bring into your life. When you can put your own agenda aside and want to meet the needs of others. God will bless you. 30, 60, and a hundredfold. He will return that blessing. But you have to be willing to devote some time and some energy with an effort to help and support other people. See, you can be the tool that God will use to fight someone else's battle. There's somebody you know, there's somebody, you know, in your space that, that is going through and don't know how to get through what they're going through. But you can be the key. If nothing else, unlock the door. Pull up the shade so the light can come in. Because right now they're in a difficult, they're in a tough place. They're in a tight place. And sometimes it takes more than prayer. Prayer works. We know prayer works. But sometimes it's going to take you showing up. Sometimes it's going to take you making a phone call. Sometimes it's going to take you getting on a train, a bus, a plane, and showing up and letting somebody know you're not in this by yourself. I'm here for you. Whew, Jesus. Help somebody else fight their battle. They need you now. So in spite of what you might be going through, know that God is not through with you yet. And I know it might be hard for some of you. I don't know how I'm going to do it for myself. And yet and still, I hear this man telling me to help somebody else. I don't even know how I'm going to make it. I know Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. I'm talking about a God that will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we just got to step out in faith with your nothing. If God can take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000, and that was 5,000 men, not talking about the women and the children that was there. And if you read your Bible, he did that on more than one occasion. I'm talking about a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. I think about the men that went fishing all night, caught nothing but weeds in their nets, came back to clean their nets. And then Jesus said, let me borrow your boat. Let's go on out there. Let's push out into the water and cast out into the deep. Now, the fishermen know the, they knew the, they knew the lake. They knew where the fish, where to find the fish, everything. They didn't see Jesus as a fisherman, knowing what they know. Because they, they grew up on that lake, fishing in that lake. And they knew the best time to fish, so on and so forth. But they caught nothing. But nevertheless, nevertheless, at that word that Jesus said, launch out into the deep and lower your nets. And the Bible says they caught so many fish and brought it on board. The boat began to sink. Matter of fact, they had to call uh, the other ship next to them. Oh, come on. We got, come on. Bitch. I'm talking about the God of more than enough. 
I'm talking about the God that's good and good, the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can act or think, according to the power that would be in you. So in spite of what you might be going through, know that God is not through with you yet. Oh, I'm here to tell you, hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. Your breakthrough. We heard about breakthrough on Monday. My precious wife brought that word on breakthrough on Monday. Breakthrough is imminent. Your breakthrough is imminent. Whew. He's the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Now, we know prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Are you hearing me? Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. But I, I, but really what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the power of prayer and what God is able to do. God is able to do anything but fail. Anything but fail. And as I said, delay is not denial. Hold on, my sister. Hold on, my brother. I don't know who God is speaking to, but I'm here to tell you right now, He's speaking to you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. Keep on pressing for the blessing because the best is yet to come. Why? Because we serve an awesome, amazing God. And believe it or not, he is deeply in love with you. Why do I say that? Because you're still here. Because what the devil meant for evil Whew, look at what you can't even imagine what God has turned around. You can't even imagine how whew, there's stuff that would have hit you, came up against you, and did come up against some of us on this line or out there looking at this on video or on YouTube. I know the devil has tried to stop many of us, but God, but God, why? Because greater is he that is in us. But God has a plan, and the devil can't change God's plan. He can't change it. He can't change it. As much as the devil want to change the plan of God, he can't change it. Not the plan that God has over your life. But you have to come to terms. Oh, my God. You have to come to terms. Do you believe this word? Do you stand in faith believing in spite of what it might look like, in spite of what you might feel like. Whew. See, I'm talking about the power of prayer and what God is able to do. See, God want to give you the advantage. He can give you. Matter of fact, he has given you already the advantage over the enemy, over our common enemy, the devil. You have the advantage over him. Why? Because in Luke 10, 19, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Break that word down. No thing. Whatever that thing is that the enemy want to bring up against you, no thing shall by any means hurt you, stop you, or keep you down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All things are working together for the good, even though it don't look like it, my sister. Even though it don't look like it, my brother. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. Oh, I was looking at a verse of scripture that I think all of us need to be reminded of. In Joshua 23, at that 10th verse, Joshua 23 and 10 says this. One man, one woman of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God will fight for you as he hath promised you. And when God, God is a promise keeper and God will never turn his back on you. He will never let you go. Are you hearing me? He saved to the uttermost. Are you hearing me? There's nothing you can do. Thank you, Jesus. Unless you start operating in a reprobate mind. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not about to go there. I'm thanking God. Why? Because one shall chase a thousand. Ooh. And then the Bible says two can put 10,000 to fight. Look at, the look at how we can multiply in strength when we can come together. United we stand, divided we fall. 
We have to be able to come together with our pastor, come together in our churches, come together in ministry, come together in family, come together in community, come together in government. It's not about power, not that kind of power, holding on to something that you can't take with you. Never seen a U-Haul going behind a hearse and we trying to lay claim. So look what that 11 verse said. Joshua 23 and 11 says this. Therefore, take careful heed to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. And God says, place no other God before him. Place no other God before him. If you want that other God, he'll let you have him. But I'm here to tell you today that other God will disappoint you every time. Because there's not another God like the God that I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about the God that stood out on nothing at the corner of no place and made the world twirl. The same God that put the sun, the moon, the stars in the sky. The same God that cut the, the valley between the mountains. The same God that, ooh, Lord, that brought you here, sent you here at this time in your life. Why? Because he has a master plan and he's included you in his plan. Oh, my God. You are blessed. You were sent here to be a blessing. You are blessed. You were blessed to be a blessing. God wants you to be a blessing. But we have to be able to remember now. We need to be reminded of how rich we are in Christ. Whew, man. I mean, man. Press down, shaking together, overflowing. God says he will pour into your bosom. You are richly blessed. Stop looking at your, your, your physical. Stop looking at the worldly and look at the spiritual side, the spiritual aspects of all of what God has put in place to bless you. This body, this flesh does not want to bow down or to, let's just say, submit to what this word is telling us. We don't want you to submit to this God who's speaking to us today. The Holy Spirit who want to guide us into all truth. Your flesh is going to fight you all the way to the grave. This flesh, oh Lord Jesus. The Bible says no good thing is going to come from the flesh. And if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Those that will commit these heinous acts that we're seeing taking place in our great nation against the violence, against children, against schools, churches, grocery store, all over, pushing people on trains and shooting people in subways. Hey, shh. They need a close encounter with Jesus. They need a close encounter with Jesus. Are you hearing me? See, how can you love and serve God? And I'm talking about our great God and continue to think small. Small. See, especially when you know what God can do, especially when you know what he's done before and what he's done before, he's able to do again, not the same way because our God is so diverse. I look at the snowflakes that will fall from the heavens. No two snowflakes are alike. No two of us are alike. Even twins are different. There's something uniquely different even about twins. That's how diverse God is. When God made you, he broke the mold. There's not another person on the planet like you. Never was and never will be. That's the God that I come to know, the God that I love, and the God that I'm telling you who has blessed you to be a blessing. He saved you so he can bless you to be a blessing. Now, if you're not saved, <laughs> I feel for you. I'm praying for you. And just because you can talk about how much you love Jesus and see actions speak louder than words. And we see the devil's actions on the planet. But now God want to see us, his people, in prayer. United, we stand. Divided, we fall. We have to come together. 
We have to come together. And we can't think small. We got to stop thinking small, believing small. You know, the size of your faith is going to is going to reward you. Or if not reward you, it's going to penalize you because you're not going to be able to receive all of what you could have had or, or received from God. Why? Because you're not believing God for it. God brought you through before. He can bring you through again. Hold on. You are too blessed to be stressed. And many of us today are, 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 are stressed out, going through, and don't know what to do. But I'm here to tell you, hold on. Don't give up. Don't give in. None of us who have come to Christ should be living in spiritual poverty. Spiritual poverty. I'm not talking about having a, 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 a big, big bank account. I'm not talking about having the, 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 the nice car, the, the house on the hill, the two pets in the, in the, in the, in the fish tank and all this other stuff. That we, the trappings that we can get that can say that, oh, we doing good. But how are you doing spiritually? That's why Paul prayed for the church. Spiritually. Mm, impoverished. No power. Because we've given place to the enemy. Need to be enlightened, spiritually enlightened. And to be enlightened means uh, uh, to receive intellectual, spiritual instructions that is meant to impart God's wisdom and knowledge so that you would be able to increase in faith. Are you hearing me? Increase in faith, faith in God, faith in self, faith in, 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 in this word. And then also increase in your love for your brother. Loving other people. Bible says something about how many times should I forgive somebody? Seven times seven? The Lord says no, 70 times seven. Have to be able to forgive. Bible said, Jesus says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. See, it is the Holy Spirit who will instruct you and teach you how to hear from God. Whew, how can you be in the church for a number of years and still don't know how to hear from God? Jesus says his sheep know his voice. And also, the Holy Spirit will not just teach you how to hear from God, but he will also teach you how to receive from him. Some of us don't even know how to receive the blessings of God. God want to bless you. And you don't even know how to receive it. Because you're blind. Blind. Blinded by fear. Blinded by worry. Blinded by double mindedness. Blinded by low self esteem. I'm not good enough. You are good enough. That's why God sent his son. To die on the cross. So that you can benefit from all. Of the benefits. Of being in Christ. The benefits. Forget not all of God's benefits. Look, look, look at this in John 16 and 13. And this is from the New Living Translation. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Now, this is Jesus talking to you. These are the words of Jesus. He will tell you about your future. He wants your future. He wants you to know that your future is already blessed. I don't know who he's encouraging right now. But he wants you to know that your future is already blessed. And then Jesus goes on to say, he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. This is what Jesus is saying. All that belongs to the Father is mine, belonging to Jesus. This is why Jesus said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. That's why you have to have a relationship with Jesus. 
because he'll give you his Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth, who will instruct you, who will lead and guide you. I believe Romans 8, 14 says uh, 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 the, the spirit, uh, those of us who are sons and sons of God, sons and daughters of God are led by his spirit are led by his spirit. It is the Holy Spirit's job to shine a light on what is hidden. To shine a light on what is hidden. Man, we going around looking for stuff outside, but there's stuff in us that God wants you to know about. There's a gift in you. There's something in you that God want to bring out. And you so busy looking outside of yourself. When God is saying, slow up, sister, slow up, brother. I put something in you that I want you to mm, operate in. I want you to use. I want you to benefit others with. It could be a song. It could be a word. It could be a prayer. It could be an arm around the shoulder. It could be a listening ear. God want to use you. And understand what is hidden in the dark will be brought into the light. It will be brought into the light. I mean, my world was rocked this year when my youngest son dropped some news on me. I am not going there. But man, what is hidden, what people will keep from you, and you think you're in control, and you think you know so much about, mm-mm. But the Holy Spirit, he knows the right time, the opportune time to bring you that information that you would need so that you can keep moving forward. And let me tell you this, starting with the mystery of the church, because the church is a mystery for many of us, even though we've been going to church for years, we are, we are unchurched. We are unchurched. We don't even know how to effectively operate in the church to make a difference. Supporting our pastors and our leadership. Uh, we, 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 have, we have gotten so used to the Zoom, we don't even want to go to church now. I'd rather stay home in my pajamas and put a little shirt or blouse on and a little cap on or whatever. And, and I want to do my service online on, on the Zoom. It's, forsake not the assembly. And whenever God opens those doors, whenever God puts in his pastors, his leadership to open those doors, to get into the church, we need to get back into the church. And we need to come together in prayer and unite. One can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 to flight. Phew. Thank you, Jesus. See, and I understand this now. We know Jesus is the head of the church. See, but we're members in the body of Christ. And God can use you. So everything has to start and evolve around Jesus. Uh, did you hear what I said? Everything has to start and revolve around Jesus. So you can evolve into the man or the woman that God sent you here to be. See, apart from him, you can do nothing. Nothing good. That's why we're seeing all this carnage out here in the world. Because men want to do their own thing. Listening to all of this hogwash, the lies. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom in Revelation. The spirit of wisdom in Revelation, making it his work, making it his work to enlighten. And then guess what? To enlighten us, to strengthen us, to lead us, to guide us, to bless us, to comfort us. You can't do it without his Holy Spirit. You can't do this. You can't live this life without the help of his Holy Spirit. See, understand, the natural man is not able to understand the things of God. First of all, the natural man don't want to understand the things of God. Doesn't want to understand the things of God. We need the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. 
We need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need the Holy Spirit to open up our blinded eyes. Help us to see the truth that is in his word. Because you could be reading the scripture, but still not see the truth that's in the scripture, that's in the word. Because once you know the truth, then the truth can set you free. And you have people who read scripture, but still not operating in the truth. So what good is highlighting your Bible? What good is those notes on the side pages of your Bible, you know, you want to remember, so on and so forth. But when the situations erupt in your life that's designed to break a good man, good woman down, you're not standing on the principles. You're not standing on the doctrines. The doctrine that you you know, that you have received from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will, he will give you the wisdom to understand his word, the God's word. Are you hearing me? Not just to understand the word, but also to apply the word. What good is having something like this word of God that is able to change your life and enable you to help someone else, lead someone else to Christ so that their lives can be made better. You have to be able to apply this word. You know, hey, you have a you have a Lamborghini, you have a, a BMW, you have yourself a, a, a Volkswagen or a Toyota outside parked in the street or in the garage. You got the keys on the table. You want to go across town. But yet and still, you don't grab the keys. You take a bus. Or you walk or you ride your tricycle. And you wonder why it's taking you so long. Why? Because you're not doing, you're not utilizing what God has made available to you. You have to apply the word. A person's inability to see and understand the spiritual things of God is not because they lack intelligence. Understand this now, it's not because they lack intelligence. It's because the eyes of their heart has not been opened by the Holy Spirit. Ooh, Jesus. The eyes of their heart, the eyes of their understanding. The Bible says in Revelations, I believe, the devil has blinded the minds of them that believe not. He has blinded the, the minds of the whole world. He has deceived the whole world. Excuse me, in Revelation 12 and 8 or somewhere around there. He has deceived the whole world. But Paul says in Scripture, he has blinded the minds of those who believe not. See, the whole, see and it's the Holy Spirit going to give you the power to live the truth. To live the truth. But do you want to live the truth? That truth is going to make you uncomfortable. See, that word of God is going to make you uncomfortable now. Because mm -mm. I know I'm better than this. I know I can do more than what I'm doing. And let me give you this, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Let me, I just, I'm just, whew, you got to, mm. You got to put up with a brother today. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 3 and 14, going back to Paul. This is Paul's prayer for the church. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened, to be strengthened, I'm going to say it again, to be strengthened, Lord Jesus, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The inner man. See, the Bible says, though the outer man is dying day by day, the inner man is being strengthened and renewed. How? By what we're doing right now. By what you're doing right now. Receiving that word of God. Prayer, fellowship, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. When you're taking counsel from yourself, you get yourself in trouble. You want to be led by the Spirit. So, so here's what he says. And I got to read that again. To be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, so that you being rooted and grounded in his love 
may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God want to fill you, fill you with his fullness. He want to pour into you his love, his joy, his peace, his compassion. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. That Holy Spirit is an unspeakable gift. That word is an unspeakable gift. Let me, let me, let me, your life is a gift from God. And your life has to be given back to him in order for you to appreciate it. And then that last and final verse says this. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you may ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. According to the power that is at work in you. What's that power? Faith to believe. Faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. And to believe that God's got you. I'm here to tell you today, God has blessed you to be a blessing. God has blessed you to be a blessing. The Lord has given you his precious Holy Spirit who will lead, guide, and unite you with Christ and with each other. Believe it or not, we're united. We're united. The family of Christ, the family of God, the body of Christ, the church. The Holy Spirit will also give you everything you will need to live the abundant life. And you know, John 10, 10, the devil come to steal, the, the, the devil come to steal, kill, destroy. But Jesus says he come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He wants you to live. He wants you to, to know. And when I say to know, to live that abundant life, not to experience it just for a moment or just for a, a day, a short period of time. And I'm not going to say that every day is going to be a great day. We're going to have our ups and downs because we're living in a fallen world. But I want to be able to say that my good days outweigh my bad days. You want to be able to say that your good days outweigh your bad days. I want a satisfying in a rewarding life. I want to be able to make a difference in the kingdom. I want to be that instrument that will bring peace to the world. That will bring peace to the world. Spiritually speaking, God wants you to be happy, healthy, and whole. I'm going to say that again. Spiritually speaking, God wants you to be happy, healthy, and whole. Happy. You know, I remember when I, when I first got married, my wife said, a happy wife is a happy life. And I did everything I could do to make her happy. Still doing it. Why? Because I want her to be happy. And in the process of making her happy, I'm made happy. See, and that's what this is about. And God is telling us today that he wants us, he wants you to be happy. Not just happy, he wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be healthy. Not just physically healthy, but spiritually healthy. And then he wants you to be made whole. Lord Jesus. How can you be made whole when Jesus is absent in your life? When you don't, you know, when you, you you're really not going to be able to celebrate this life if he's not in it. And you just can't invite him when you need him. You know, when things are not going the way you want it to go. See, he's got to be a 24-7 God. He's got to be a God in the good times and the bad times. Lord, I just, whew, I won't get like David. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. In your presence is fullness of joy. The, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I need you, Jesus. And today I recognize and realize I am too blessed to be stressed. My brother, my sister out there, if you sitting out there, you hearing this? And I'm not here to say everything is going the way you want it to go. 
But I'm here to say you're doing a whole lot better than someone else. You're doing a whole lot better than other people. And what I'm here to say is this. And what you should be saying to yourself right now is this. I am too blessed to be stressed. Mm, God's got me. I am too blessed to be stressed. I'm going all the way with Jesus today, tomorrow, this month, this week, this year, to the remainder of my, I'm going all the way with Jesus. Why? Because he has sent me here to be a blessing. He has blessed me to be a blessing. He has blessed you to be a blessing, my sister. 